number 63 in my audio files on my phone. I need to clean that out. <laughs> That's intense. Do you just do this in there or do you do other stuff in there too? I do other stuff in there too. That's what she said. Um, also, <laughs> this is since, for, since I've had iPhones. So, yeah. It's a lot of years in here of never cleaning it out. Wow, that's a lot, yeah. Or yeah, really I think I've got like thirteen or, excuse me, thirteen or fourteen, just <laughs> from life. All right. Well, hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm hot. It's you're hot. Summer. Summer is here. It's hot. I'm dry. <laughs> Those are also morning. two things. That she stop said. It. Um, okay, I need to stop. Keep it together. Keep it together. Here mm-hmm. we are. What are we talking about this week? We are talking about talking to our people cl- in our close circle when we have a baby or are pregnant about all those things that we want that might be different from what they are used to and how they do things and how we do that in a gentle graceful manner Mm -hmm. lovingly yeah those difficult conversations yeah and and which ones to have so last week we talked about um gendering and the performance of gender and the expectations of a baby to perform their gender, which was really just making me feel a lot of ways. And, you know, it comes in waves. I still feel ways about it. But yeah, so we were talking about clothes specifically and the fact that other people buy my son his clothes. And what that's meant is because other people don't have this idea of gender performance in the top of their mind is that he's gotten a lot of like quote unquote boy clothes. He's got a lot of blues, a lot of cars and dinosaurs and grays and the things that you find browns. when you go to the boy section exactly. in the store. Exactly. Everything that is allowed to be in the boys section. I'm doing our air quotes again. Yeah. So you were going to ask me a question at the end of that episode and we cut it off because we were already at time. So now I want you to ask me that question. Yeah. And this question leads into this topic, which Megan and I have talked about so many times for such a long time because it's so on top of our minds and important to us. So... I was going to ask if you have tried to bring this up with your very generous family members that buy the clothes for your son, if you want to do that, if you've been thinking about it, if yes, if you've thought about how you would do that, what maybe concerns, fears around that are for you, all the things, if you were willing to share. Yeah. So I have talked a little bit to the folks buying the clothes, especially the one, one grandmother that's buying most of the clothes. And she's asked me, you know, like, what do you like? What do you want? What are you looking for? Which is awesome. She's so sweet. So over time, I've kind of been more and more specific. So at first I didn't want to say too much because I didn't want to like stifle her joy because she gets a lot of joy out of this. Yeah. And she just loves thrift shopping and she loves going to the store and getting stuff for her grandbabies. And like, she's so excited about it and so into it. And so she's asked me multiple times, which is so great, right? Because then I don't have to bring it up. And she's always very open to like, take what you like. Don't take what you don't. I'll take it back to the store and redonate it. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So again, awesome. And so I've given her like little snippets of requests. Like at first I asked for solid colors because I like solid colors on my baby. Anyway, I feel like they're more gender neutral than some of the like 
patterns that involve trucks or animals or monsters or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then in another conversation, one recently, actually around the time that we were having that conversation on here, she asked again and I was like, well, you know, he's got a lot of like blues and grays, so we would love other colors. Like, and then I listed them out and I listed all the colors and she was like, oh, okay, sounds good. I'll see what I can find. So I think that's sort of the ideal situation. Yeah. Yeah. Where the person is asking for your input and asking what you want and then open to those suggestions and open to doing something to align what they're doing with your requests. Yeah. So that one was super easy. (laughs) And it, it has taken time, right? Like my kid is now almost a year old and we've had multiple, multiple conversations that have been progressively more specific Mm -hmm. and I think that that is my preferred way to go about these conversations I feel like I did it rather poorly with my mom at some point (laughs) because I feel the most comfortable with my mom Mm -hmm. and I'm the least worried about offending her even if I should be (laughs) we were getting a lot of like browns and grays and tans when I asked for gender neutral Mm -hmm. clothes and gender neutral stuff when I was pregnant. Right. And I was like, everybody's just giving us brown and green and colorless things, and I'm so <laughs> upset about it. And she had given us this adorable little tan newborn outfit with like a giraffe and a elephant and a something and a lion on it, and it was so cute. And it was also tan. And and I was like, oh, shit. I just, like, crapped on the present that she gave us. And that's not a nice thing to do. That let's, I don't ever want to do that. Yeah. Even if I don't like something, the fact that someone gives us a present is beautiful and lovely in and of itself, you know? Like... The fact that they wanted to do that, and even if they did it in a way that doesn't fit what I would have expected or wanted, like, that's not the function of a present, right? So, I think I've done it poorly, and I think I've done it well. Experience. We need yeah. It, you know. Yeah. So, that's, those have been the conversations on the, like, clothing front. I haven't had conversations with everyone that buys him stuff. Because it's just not necessary or, like you said at the beginning, doing it in a graceful way and in a loving way. If someone's getting him a gift, you know, every six months, there's no reason to give them parameters unless I really don't want anything, right? And so I have Mm -hmm. given, like, please don't buy toys, like, please don't buy this, please don't buy that. If someone asks me what we, what we need or what we're looking for, I will give them something specific, right? Mm-hmm. But if they don't and they just want to get him something, I'm not interested in stopping that because I'll then have to figure out what to do with the thing if, we, if we're not going to use it. Yeah. Your turn. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. Yeah, I don't have any experience in it yet because I have a kid, so I don't have needed to do it yet. I think about it a lot, though, which is why Megan and I have talked about this a lot between ourselves already. Yeah. Because, like, I think about a baby shower. Like, once people find out you're pregnant, they and which is so nice, right? They tend to want to give you gifts. And we have done an episode about sustainability before. I try really hard not to buy stuff. And when I find out that I do need or want something, I try really hard to find that second hand. And if I can't do that, I try really hard to find a sustainable, eco-friendly, recycled material, you know, all the things, solution. And within the last few years, I have asked the people in my life not to give me gifts anymore for birthdays 
Christmas, whatever, our wedding. That was also a thing that we asked for no presents. We asked for food instead because we had a zero euro wedding. So we asked for people to bring food, which worked out perfectly. And it was yeah. great. But things like that, because we have this tradition of gift giving on mm-hmm. certain occasions, I asked myself around those situations how to deal with that and how to yeah communicate in a loving way because I don't feel like I'm really good at it. I I think I have hurt people's feelings in asking them not to get me anything anymore because I feel like I haven't done a great job at exploring Explaining it without hurting their feelings. Yeah, I think there's a really, it's just so easy to hurt people's feelings in that situation. Yeah. And, and it's really hard not to. And even if you explained it perfectly and even if you were able to help them understand your motivation in that, I still think because of the tradition and because of the expectation and because of the normalcy of giving gifts in lots of different situations, it's, I, yeah, I think there, I think it's really hard to avoid hurting feelings, period. And also it obviously really depends on who you're talking to. Like we're not going to be able to figure out a standard way of saying this and then everyone can use this with every person yeah it really depends on who you're talking to like you said in your example you did it in a certain way with your mom and you did it in a certain way with one of his grandmas um with his other grandmas because your mom is also grandma she sure is but yeah because they are different and the situation in itself was different yeah Mm -hmm. Well, and I think like the baby shower thing, right? There are alternatives that exist that are already out there in the world. Like my friend who had a baby recently, right before I did, had a, I don't remember what she called it, but it wasn't a shower. It was a mother's blessing. That's what it was. Mm. It was a mother's blessing. And she had everyone bring a bead And then she had a necklace that she she had with her during labor and she had during, you know, during her birth. Oh, I have goosebumps. Right? And that seems like a thing that you would love, right? Like having... Yeah, I do want to do a blessing way. The people come together that love you and love your baby and are part of your family and your close friends and have them with you to a certain extent while you're in labor and giving birth yeah. and having their like support and, and power and thoughts and spirits and love with you. Yeah. And so that's a thing that exists and there's, there's parameters for that. And there's like, it's a good instead. Mm-hmm. It's a good substitution for a baby shower because yeah. it's still a celebration and it's still a way of them being part of your having a baby because that's kind of what a baby shower is about is Mm -hmm. bringing the people in your village into your baby having experience yeah yeah and I think that was and still is part of my journey that I needed to realize that there are more parts of gift giving and receiving that Mm -hmm. I was conscious of which is I think a big reason why I have done it poorly so far because I just wasn't aware of the other layers there you were thinking about the transactional part of it yeah in the beginning I was yeah just about the well I there's a high chance that when someone's going to give me something, I don't want it. And then, like I said in the sustainability episode, which this sounds very harshly, but I think of all things as trash because they're ultimate, ultimately going to be. So I 
like just got very sad when I got things that I had no yeah and really I, say, I I asked you earlier this year about getting you something used for and it. your response was like you got so sad immediately like you just yeah got so sad because I think one you were thinking of the thing that you weren't going to want two you were thinking of hurting my feelings and saying no I don't want it and so it was just and about making it complicated I was thinking about Mm -hmm. because the way I'm approaching this the way I would like it to be like there is a possibility to give me things it's just really complicated right and I don't want to put that on people so that was another thing in that sorry continue no that's fine I just wanted to add that in yeah um, I guess I was just underlining the, when I brought up a present to you, like you, you like went so dark. It was so sad. And I was like, Oh, never mind. Cool. Bye. Like everything's fine. It's okay. Um, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. And that's okay. And I think that you've been doing this long enough. That I feel like people in your life are a little bit like, mm, maybe we don't give Hana things. <laughs> maybe we just figure out how to do something else. So I think that is a really big part of this, right? Like we haven't navigated that all that much with our family before this. Because there weren't a lot of occasions to give us things. It was like Christmas, basically. And sometimes birthday. But since we've become adults and had adult relationships with our parents, the gift giving has been a lot more specific and has been a lot more like, we want to get you something that you want. And so there's been the expectation that we'll talk about it ahead of time, Mm -hmm. which is lovely and wonderful and hasn't been like a burden in terms of stuff in our house or anything like that. It's been just a really nice thing and we've you know had different ways of doing holidays and stuff like that so yeah I think it's as much about expectations as it is about each individual conversation because it's also Mm -hmm. this isn't just around gifts and stuff right this is also around who's going to be at your birth around how you're going to implement your life choices in parenting it's about within your village how other people take care of your child and respect Mm -hmm. your choices yeah we've come a lot into this into these conversations around food for our baby right Mm. oh my god yeah i'm so afraid of that too Mm -hmm. continue um, well, and I think I have a slightly different approach than than you do. I think I'm a little more laissez-faire than you're comfortable with. Yeah. But I have been really specific. Like, people want to give him sweets and, like, things that are delicious and full of sugar. Mm-hmm. And I've Processed been sugar, pretty... you mean? Right, yeah. And we've been pretty clear that We don't want him to have those things until he's over two. And like we've said that many times to different portions of our family. And the beautiful thing for us is like, it's not complicated for us to ask for things for our baby. Like Mm -hmm. people are very eager to support us in our decisions around our child. Yeah. And So while it's uncomfortable and while it's required, like, more assertiveness than I'm usually (laughs) prone to in Uh conversations, it hasn't been tumultuous. It hasn't been dramatic. It's been very well received and not always enthusiastically, but always with respect and, like, they're all down, which is great. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So happy for all of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Me too. I have such wonderful in-laws and parents and family generally. Like, it's just freaking great when people are all loving and respectful of each other. <laughs> it's really lovely. 
Please nobody hate Megan for this. Please let's all just be happy for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I'm I'm very aware of how lucky we are in that aspect of our family dynamic. Yeah. I think there is a certain point where you have to let go though. Yeah. Finding where that is, I think is gonna be hard for you. Yep. Might be. <laughs> Because like you say, there's there's more layers. I'm sorry. I feel like I've cut you off several times now. I'm, I apologize. No, you're fine. I was just going to say that I'm, I'm nervous about many of those things. I, we have a great relationship to all of our family members, my family, my in-laws, and the other way around his in-laws my family i'm fine with him all those Mm -hmm. all big happy family but we and specifically i aim to do things a lot differently than our parents did and we also have the layer of cultural difference that yeah, two cultures are going to have an influence in our parenting style, which is going to make it even more different for, in each scenario, the other Mm -hmm. culture, Mm -hmm. (laughs) grandparents. Um, Yeah, and I mean, I don't know how it's going to be received, and I'm just nervous about it. Yeah. Because I think many things are not going to be understood. So then there's just the question of if they're going to be open to respect that, although they don't understand and maybe don't Mm -hmm. agree with it. Yeah. And I realize that that's a lot to ask. Mm -hmm. To respect and even do things, even though you don't agree with it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we talked a little bit in the respectful parenting episode or the emotion coaching debrief or something. We've talked about it, I think, Mm -hmm. that you and your partner are the biggest influence in your child's life. Yeah. And so if grandparents or other caregivers aren't familiar with this idea of gentle care and, like, respectful care – they're not going to like ruin your child. They're not going to irreparably harm your child's psyche. Um, Unless there's some sort of abuse going on, which I don't expect that that would happen. Um, Well, well, there's other cultures involved where, yeah, I don't know. That's where something is a um, thing or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. 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 And so I think figuring out the things that are, Mo- not, not most important, but like hard lines, mm-hmm. right? Because like, I'm probably not going to give my kid a bunch of sweets even after he's two. But when I take and drop him off at his grandparents' house for the day, he's probably going to have sweets and then he'll come home and it'll be fine. <laughs> like, that's not a hard line for me. Yeah. But something like spanking is a hard line for me, right? Yeah. And getting a bunch of stuff in our house is a hard line for me. So I've been able to communicate that over time. Like we don't have room for this. I'm not looking for noisy toys. Like I'm going to take the batteries (laughs) out of the toys that you give us. And there are things that are important to communicate. And there are things where I've had to go, okay, this is how it's going to be on a daily basis and in our house and regularly and then sometimes that's not gonna happen and that's okay and like finding what the actual the the big stuff is what the what the most important things are because i feel like you only have so many things before it starts getting really dicey yeah and you want to be able to communicate those and let everything else go a little laxer 
in service of those really big things. Yeah. And I think that's the part I'm most concerned about. Not because you said my partner and I are going to have the biggest influence and all those other things are just minor. So my big concern is more how much of our time together in a big family mm. situation is going to be taken up with discussions and heart conversations and how much can we just enjoy each other. Mm-hmm. I think that's more my concern. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, I don't think that's something I can figure out before because what you just said, the finding the heart lines and where where you want to cut it off, where you are okay to be more relaxed and where you want to really draw the line. I think some of those things um, we're only going to be able to figure out when we're there. On the go. Yeah. Yeah. In the moment. Yeah. So we'll see. Mm. It's so complicated we love people and having hard conversation as an adult you can usually avoid stuff like this you can usually avoid (laughs) because you can make your own choices and you're in charge of your own house and like you don't have to deal with the different ways that other people live but when you have a village raising a child when you want your family involved in your child's life like both of us do you do have to navigate that stuff because only you are going to know how you're dealing with your family and everyone else's family is going to be their family. And it's very specific to that group of people, you know, nuclear family, I'm talking parents and children mm-hmm. and wider families too. Right. Cause navigating one, one of like Mateus's family is going to be different from navigating your family. And when we're, when we're creating this interwoven life, this larger family life, we have to encounter a lot of the things that modern life allows us to sidestep. Yeah. So it's hard. Be easy on yourself. Take it slow. We're all going to be okay. We're not all going to be okay, but you and I are going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I really feel strongly for people that have a lot more difficulties to navigate because yeah that have a difficult like for example in-law situation to start with you mean Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and who have that's true have to navigate bigger differences because i've also seen that and it's it's really hard and it does like you said it takes up a lot of the time that people are together so I'm very grateful for our situation and I, I'm, I'm hopeful Amen. for yours. Yeah, me too. Cool. Thanks for chatting to me about it. Yeah. Thanks for chatting to me about it. <laughs> and we'll chat to all of you again next week. Yeah, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.